uh, I would like to um, thank you deeply for welcoming me here. Uh, thank you for the to the Kashmir Institute of International Relations and the WMC because he, today is a special day, as stated before by my fellow panelists. International Women's Day marks a call to action for accelerating women equality, and it is supposed to raise awareness, uh, prevent violation of women's rights, and condemn the ones who perpetrate them. As said before, the situation of women in Kashmir is a topic that highlights the importance to constantly remind ourselves that even though we live in a modern world and society, there's still a long way to achieve and implement women's fundamental human rights, gender equality and gender empowerment. Kashmir is one of the most militarized areas of the world. And in fact, it as underlined by the Office of the High Commissioner of Human Rights, um, there is still a collection of serious and massive violations of human rights with the action of armed groups, killing of civilians, political activists and protesters. The Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir did not establish any investigations into civilian killings. In armed conflicts, the roles of women and men are st strictly distinguished. In fact, women are often given fewer formal roles or positions of control and command. Different roles pursued by women in armed conflicts can lead to violations of human rights. They are victims not only of physical, but also of psychological violence. And the situation worsens when it comes to conservative societies. One of the atrocities to which Kashmiri women are constantly exposed to is rape as a war weapon and sexual torture. It has been used in previous armed conflicts around the world, for example, in Yugoslavia and also in Rwanda, but it acquired a criminal relevance not long ago. Today, women's bodies are still instrumentalized and humiliated, and it is our duty as activists and, and as women to inform and try to stop these atrocities, aiming to punish it. When speaking of gender approach, we find that rape during an armed conflict can cause severe forms of trauma, which can have tragic consequences on the victim's psychological sphere, the death of victims for many different reasons, and it can be used as a tool to control births and often as a tool to physically destroy the birth givers, usually with the purpose of erasing a specific group, and in particularly when speaking of anti cleansing In fact, as claimed by the ICTR, Rape becomes a genocide act when it is used against specific women, causing devastating sense of suffering towards a specific group. ICTR defines it as a physical invasion of sexual nature committed on a person under circumstances which are coercive. It is committed as a part of a widespread or systematic attack on a civilian population on curtain the catalog discriminatory grounds, namely ethnic, political, racial or religious ones. The ICTY, in fact, extends its definition to act of sexual penetration without any kind of consent from the victim. It has been recognized as an instrument aiming to terrorize, demoralize the victim, obtain control on peoples and territories, punish and humiliate the victim, but is mostly used as a war weapon for its tremendous consequences, unwanted pregnancies and control over the reproductive capacities of women. Women's bodies then become the enemy's property. And this can be observed in Kashmir. As a de facto region, Kashmir does not benefit from the qualification of the Yure formal sovereign state. Since it is administered by India and Pakistan, it has been in different occasions a scenario of human rights serious violations. And its people are the main characters of inhumane and degrading treatments towards its population. What India is performing in India administered Kashmir is a set of serious violations of the Geneva Convention, including Article 3, and of the laws and customs of war crimes. These kind of terms are a part of human rights serious and massive violations, for example, atrocities, systematic attacks to civilians, war crimes, crimes against humanity, genocide, and aggression, over which the International Criminal Court has its jurisdiction. Genocide, regulated by Article 6 of the ICC, is a violent act carried out with special intention. Its definition has not formally changed since 1948. We are deeply concerned about the situation and the possible long-term effects these atrocities will have on the lives of Kashmiri women. Therefore, we ask the international community to properly encourage and help Kashmiri people. We are aware that these fundamental human rights cannot be realized without it. I send my heartfelt solidarity to the brave Kashmiri women. Thank you very much for your attention.